then came an even greater crisis, Watergate. I'm just wondering what's on those tapes, because as you've heard through the House Judiciary Committee debate, nobody truly believes that the president would at this late date be holding on to exculpatory evidence. And there is a feeling around town, as you also know, that those tapes may be far more damaging than anything we've seen so far, or why else would the president have held them this long and stonewalled, to use that awful word, both the committee and the courts. And so I think we may be in for some shocks. So Rick, the outspoken to... reporting about Nixon policies didn't go over well with the Nixon White House. And an attempt was made to kill federal funding for PBS news programs. Washington Week's next moderator, Lincoln Ferber, decided to fight back. It was reported in Washington today that there is a possibility that Washington Week in Review may not be funded again after June of this coming year. And if those of you who have been part of our audience over the past six years would care to express an opinion on the possibility of this program's going off the air, here is our address. The response to that announcement was really stunning, uh, especially in public television terms. Um, over the next few weeks, uh, upwards of 15,000 letters poured in to us. And one of the really touching things about it, I think, was that um, a lot of those letters included money, uh, dollar bills, checks for fifteen dollars, twenty-five dollars. Uh, the people just wanted to keep that program on the air. Washington Week survived, but Richard Nixon did not, as the darkness of August 1974 descended over the White House. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Peter, you were at the White House all day today. What was it like? Well, let me start with the East Room of the White House, uh, Paul, where a remarkable changing of the guard occurred without pomp, without precedence, as we know. The East Room is a scene of historic events, ceremonies of all kinds, from news conferences to diplomatic receptions, swearing in of cabinet officers to entertainments. Well, today we got uh, the former president, Mr. Nixon, saying his valedictory to his staff, to his cabinet, to his official family. And it was vintage Nixon. It was quite different from his speech, his resignation speech on uh, last night. I'm getting my nights and days mixed up here, Paul. But uh, it was all of the bitterness that Mr. Nixon contained in his resignation speech came out in that long, rambling discourse before his before his cabinet and his staff in the East Room. Uh, his uh, bitterness against the press, his bitterness against his enemies, his bitterness against those who would suggest that the Watergate principles got feathered their own nest. 